silence your cell phones now. What you did. I did what I was trying to do! I just want justice. That's all I want. What's going on, YouTube? It's SC, a place to be chill, Mr. Andy. Back to you guys the movie experience. So, this is a movie that I never thought that I would probably be reviewing. And to be honest with you, it was a little bit difficult for me to come kind of review them. But since I'm doing the movie experience every single weekend now, and we're trying to keep with that schedule. This was a kind of like a kind of a low weekend for movies right now because next week the new Denzel movie comes out that I'm trying to, and, and um, Romney Malik movie come out so I'm trying to check out but right now I gotta keep the consistency going here and I just want to give you a documentary so we're going to look at the new movie that just came out on Amazon Prime but it, it was made back in 2019 or something like that released at a, at a festival in 2019 American Skin. So American Skin is starring Nate Parker, and Nate Parker plays the character of Lincoln Jefferson, who is an ex-marine, and who comes back and has his son, and they get pulled over by the cops, and then the cops shots and kills his son, and this is it's all in the trailer, and then now he's going to go take matters into his own hands. So, to, for a couple of days to know about me, for those who don't, because you see, I love movies, so I, I react and review all kinds of movies. I can watch a civil rights movie any single day of the week. It don't matter, especially when January and February come around. I watch them all the time, and yeah, they're painful to look at. Movies I can't watch, slavery movies, I, I'm done with them. I, I can't. I'm so sick and tired of watching slavery movies. I can't really watch slave movies no more. So there's a new slave movie coming out. I'm like, like for, for instance, the Birth of the Nation for Nate Parker. I couldn't check that. Out. I was like, I, I, I'm so done with slave movies. And then we have the movies of police brutality, and this is going to sound weird, so just bear with me. The reason why it's hard for you to watch the movies is because when it comes to slavery, I'm like, no matter what happens, at the end of the movie, there's still Jim Crow. And they still got to go do Jim Crow. When And then when it comes to police brutality, we haven't got to the end of that at all. We haven't got to the brighter day of that yet, of holding these cops accountable for what they do. So it's just like, you keep watching it, like, I'm living in this right now. The Civil Rights era, it, uh... I'm not, they're, they're not happy the endings neither, <laughs> but by no means. It's just that you feel there's a little bit of satisfaction, like when we, when I watch Selma, something like that, and they get the Voter Rights Act signed, something like that, and then we have gotten better than what we did that, uh, that that day, but we still got ways to go. When it comes to slavery and police brutality, it's just like, well, you already know how it's going to mostly end. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, like that. But um, I checked this movie, I said, because Swag on Zero put me on the blind spotting. And that was a very, very good movie that was a shocker a couple years ago. And I was like, maybe this could be like a blind spot thing. And I have to say here, there's a lot of things I like about this movie. Things I don't like about this movie and stuff like that. So what I'm going to usually do here is I'm going to give you guys the good, I'm going to give you guys the bad, I'm going to give you guys the experience. Starting off with the good. I used to be a fan of Nate Parker only because of the movies in because these are the movies Nate Parker does. You know, if you watch Pride, if you watch The Great Debaters, if you watch, you know, uh, Birth of a Nation, these are the movies that Nate Parker shines that he had to load that nonstop movie. But the, the thing about Nate, like, Nate, Nate Parker is, is he had the Beyond the Lights movie also. He's severe with controversy and especially there's that, that rape allegation. And a lot of people was canceling Nate, uh, Nate Parker. And I don't blame him, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to support somebody you know, who's a rapist or something like that. But once again, I'm not getting all into that stuff like that. But <clears throat> these are the kind of movies that he was into. I like the the message that it was getting at in this movie. Okay, because it's a very, it's a heavy movie. Like, I watched this movie, I had to take a nap afterwards because it was like going to a funeral. It just, it just drained you and I was just like like Detroit <laughs> you know what I'm saying man it's, it's going to drain you and it, to, to the point I was just like man it's unapologetic it's backhanded it's going to give you that and the scenario that they do it is is I like it I don't but for the, for the like it part it's a scenario I, I, I don't give spoilers away to the end but it's a scenario where most of the 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 film is filmed like documentary style. And when I first seen it, a lot of people may say Blair Witch Project. The first thing I thought about seeing it, especially when I see that Spike Lee was the producer on this thing, is that Bamboozle. So if y'all ever seen Spike Lee's film Bamboozle with Damon Wayans and J. Pickett Smith, 
I know that Bad Boots is an underrated movie. It, it still has the Spike Lee isms to it, and there's still issues with that movie. But Bamboozle is a movie I recommend you guys do check out. But it had that kind of a uh, handheld, you know, kind of documentary style filming aspect to it. And that's how I felt along with this movie also. Nate Parker does good in his role because like I said these are the kind of movies that Nate Parker, you know, shines. At. I'm not saying like like when he was in nonstop, I was like that's something different. You know what I'm saying, but but. But when it comes to these biopics or when it comes to these serious situations, it's like I feel. And on top of that, also, I can feel being a parent in this situation and how I will respond and what is my duty to protect my child by all means, especially from the world. That's just human nature. It's not a black thing, not a white thing, Asian, Native American, Hispanic thing. By nature, as a parent, even, even animals and mammals out there, man. They, they have to say that, but yeah, they, they all protect themselves. Like you'll say, mama bear will protect the baby bear, and then, and you know the lion protect the cub. It doesn't matter. That's just the nature of it, type thing. And I, I feel how he's when he's marine, he just is not able to protect his son the way he, you know, is supposed to. And then we also have uh, Amari Harwick in this movie, and like I say, he does he does pretty good for his situation. Also, of, of who he is, he, he's a. He's a uh, ex-Marine guy who has problems also, who's suffering through a lot right now. So he's kind of like balls to the wall in this. And then they got the guy, I forgot his name. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going uh, from Theo Rosie, Rosie, who plays Shades in Luke Cage. He plays one of the cops in here. So uh, I, I think when it comes to the acting, most of it, well, most of it was fine. It was, it, it was good, solid. The movie's not that long. It's only about an hour, 30, hour, 40 minutes. Something like that. And the scenario that <clears throat> Nate Parker was trying to tell is, I was like, okay, I'm digging it. And the topic needs to be talked about. I'm not sitting here saying by no means that this movie needs to be comfortable for the viewer. That's not that's not how it's supposed to be. I'm also going to uh, give you the opinion of uh, uh, the way the movie was made type thing. Because you can be heavy handed like Spike Lee, but still produce a great quality movie. That's where I'm going to go into a little bit of my bad. So let's get into the bad. So when it comes to the bad for me, honestly, it's, you know, I think the way this movie was, this movie, I heard somebody say, when I watched another review saying that this would have been better if it was a play type thing. I don't know if I agree with it being a play. I think it, it would have been a doc, it would have been great, a great documentary. Obviously, if this something like, if something like this really happened, or um, it would have been, I don't know. It just, I don't know if it fit the the, the movie format because it, it, there was a lot of things that was so kind of like one dimensional, and it was it, it's, it's kind of hitting you kind of hard, kind of fast to the point where it could turn off the viewer. And the viewer not necessarily has to be the white person. I'm talking about the black viewer also because you want to educate. They, they don't teach us stuff in school, and you want to educate through film, some of that we be doing a lot of movies, but you have to make sure that your film is put together the right way to bring people in, then to teach them that hard lesson. And this is is this is not that necessarily. Uh, like I said, it could I could get you know a lot of black guys from there, but I'm just saying, but just in a film aspect, that, that's not what it is. Then there's the dialogue in there. There's a point where uh, the, the, their plan had hatches out and once again I don't want to get too exposed towards the end but it's just like this dialogue is like this is not the way people would talk to each other necessarily and it seems like they just went off and all the fights that everybody had on Twitter and social media and stuff like that about police brutality stuff like that they just took it and just put it in the movie I'm just like I don't know if this situation would act the way it had you know the, the, uh, that way so I'm just like mmm I don't know that to say that work or if it doesn't work for me necessarily. And then we get to the ending, and I'm just like, it's kind of predictable, kind of. I don't know which way I would want it to go, to be honest with you. But uh, it's kind of hard to talk about any of this stuff in detail without talking about a little bit of spoilers. So, uh, in the experience, so let's go right to the experience. <laughs> All right, so this part says obviously we don't go to movie theaters. This is a spoiler warning, so you guys have been warned. So make sure you guys, if you don't want to hear any spoilers, make sure you know you start watching this video now. Go watch it, come back to it, and stuff like that. We're gonna talk about a little bit of spoilers. Okay, so here's the thing: Nate Parker loses his son, 
Okay, and now he is him and a couple of his his marine friends and him are going to go in the police station that this that this cop works at because the cop the cop never went on trial at all for this. He got away with it and never went on trial for it. So he breaks into the police station. Okay, with, with I mean they, they got the they're high military assault rifles and everything. They take over the police station and they're going to give the cop that killed his son the trial that he's supposed to have. And he said, "I'm going to be as fair, as, you know, say as possible with it." But if they convict you guilty, he's going to kill him. But if not, he's going to let you walk out of here. And then the jury is like these inmates. And then the cop gets upset. And he's like, you know, said they're, going to, they're not going to be fair to me. But once again, they, they, they tell us, you know, we're supposed to have a jury of our peers. But we never have any jury of our peers at all. And it, it, the justice system sways it that way. So we don't get that. But then, so you don't get a jury of your peers kind of thing and they're sitting there trying to make their case and this is the part i was talking about they're in the police station they're all gunned up and everybody just sitting there they're in a situation where now we have to listen to each other but i felt so the, the situation wouldn't have gone necessarily just like that the, the, the dialogue was kind of like messed up i felt as though there's a, a other acting that they could have did that i felt as though that or lines they could have used because it's like first it's like it's like well, what side are you on but then after a while after towards the end it's like okay well we come around to see that this cop is guilty so you know <clears throat> at the end I like I said, I'm gonna give you guys a lot of spoilers he gives uh, the cop uh, the phone to say I'm gonna give you one chance to call your wife and you know 11 you're not coming home tonight and then he goes to pull the gun and then the gun's empty and I I, I, I knew it was empty and I was just like okay he ain't gonna make it out of here though because that's the reality of it and he was just like you know uh, I want that what you felt right now is how I've been feeling okay and the cop well I never knew it like that stuff like that and he, he said I'm gonna lay by a gun I'm gonna, and they, I, I turn myself in and we walk out here like he'll go to jail but then as soon as he gets out there a sniper kills him and then that's the movie and it's like you knew what was going to happen. You knew it was a reality. That's why those movies make you mad because it's just like, oh my God, it's never fair. And I'm like, you can't go up into a police station and just, you know, wreak havoc and not expect that to happen. You knew that was going to happen. But that would only happen to us. You know what I'm saying? Because it wouldn't happen to anybody. We just see what happened when they stormed the Capitol and stuff like that. So it's like, it's exhausting. It, it really is exhausting. But, however, I can go more in detail about it. But right now, uh, I don't know how it this movie. It's not a bad movie. It ain't a great movie neither. And I'm not going to, you know, the, the quality and stuff like that. And I, I think it. this would have been better as a short, maybe a documentary. Because, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that there are these kids that are trying to do a documentary about the police killings and stuff like that, especially of his son. And he kind of like kidnaps them. To, and they're documenting this whole thing about him taking over this police station. Like, he said, we can do a documentary. They, they scrapped up, but they like, what the hell? So they kind of like kidnapped documentary kids right there. And it's like, you know, don't stop filming as you're doing this. I'm like, yo, look, like, what? I'm just trying to get a project for school. Like, what's going on, bro? I ain't trying to, I ain't not part of your brigade type thing like that. So, it's, uh, uh it's a lot. <laughs> it, it really is a lot. It's heavy. It's very heavy. But I'm going to give American Skin a hashtag give it a chance this is going to be a movie that you know say it's going to hit hard it's going to hit everybody kind of different i mean obviously african americans will probably relate to this movie more though so than our white counterparts but you know what i'm saying but that white counterparts may understand the movie also but um the ending i was just like my god Dick nate parker wanted to do so this is directed by nate parker also so this is his movie and the filming of it just looked cheap because of the because uh, of the way that they decide to film it and then also it was just like i know he wanted to do something that was grand that was different that was very different in the movie and those things do succeed in movies when they're done right i don't know it was just executed at its best ability obviously so a lot of people may hate it for that some people might love it for the context I'm kind of a guy that's in the middle. Would I ever watch this party again? Probably not. Okay, this is not like Blind Spotting. I think Blind Spotting did it better. It, it was a different scenario where they used it to talk about a real issue, and it was 
it was dope. Blind Spotting was really dope. It was a very uh, underrated movie. I think they did it did that right. You, you, you welcome the people in with the, you know with your narrative, and then you, you you hit them hard over the head with the message. But it was still you know say people people was like cock out the movie. This one I, I think it's what they tried to do. It just wasn't done right. But hey, post out your comments down below. How did you guys uh, enjoy American Skin? Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed my re uh, my review of it. If you guys are new here, hit the subscribe button. I do these movie reviews and experiences every single weekend. So there's going to be a new movie that I'm going to review, maybe a new documentary. So it's going to come out, especially with the HBO Max and Warner Bros. thing coming up. So every weekend, expect something, uh, and with the Netflix thing, expect something new coming out. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, once again, this is NCN Place to Be, Chill Train Machine D, and I'll see you at the movies.